As the U.S. House of Representatives prepares to cast the final vote on the Democrats' sweeping climate and health care bill tomorrow, Lisa Desjardins takes a look at how the measure would change the nation's tax laws. William, few things before Congress directly affect our bank accounts, who is rich and who is poor, more than tax policy. These changes in the bill are significant. Here's what it will do. First, this would create a 15% minimum tax on large corporations. Exempt from that would be some hedge funds and investment firms. Also new, a 1% tax on stock buybacks, which companies use to increase their stock price. What will all that mean in reality? For more, I'm joined by Michael Gratz. He's a professor of tax law at Columbia University and co-author of The Wolf at the Door, The Menace of Economic Insecurity and How to Fight It. First, Professor Gratz, I want to establish some baselines with our viewers. Let's talk about the corporate tax change. Here's what we know about it. This 15% minimum tax would be for businesses making over $1 billion a year. Uh, that would be on an average over three years. The Joint Committee on Taxation says that will affect about 150 companies and raise well over $200 billion. That's a lot of numbers. But Michael Gratz, how significant do you think this is? Well, in some sense, it's, it's important. Um, it's not earth-shaking. This minimum tax raises about the same amount of money as raising the corporate rate from 21 to 23 percent. So it's less than um, many people had urged, uh, although, uh, as you know well, Kristen Sinema was not prepared to raise the corporate rate, the main rate at all. Um, the problem here is that there are many companies that have very large earnings that they're reporting to their shareholders, and they're paying little or no tax. And this minimum tax is directed at addressing that problem. And so the revenue it raises is only from large corporations who have large amounts of income and are paying taxes that are less than 15 percent of the income they're reporting to their shareholders. Those corporations also have large amounts of lawyers. What are the chances that they'll find a different way around this tax? How do you read this new law? How strong is it? Well, I think it's quite strong because uh, corporate managers are very anxious not to reduce the amount of earnings that they report to shareholders. And if you look at the history of tax shelters in the corporate sector in the United States, one common feature of those tax shelters is that they reduced taxes, but they did not reduce the earnings reported to shareholders on their books. You mentioned Senator Kirsten Sinema. Uh, one of the groups that also that actually did well in this bill is hedge fund and equity fund managers, who she protected uh, is a couple of different times uh, from getting larger tax hits from this bill. When I asked, sources close to her told me that she was concerned that raising taxes on hedge fund managers would affect investment in her state. I wonder what you make of that argument, and what do we know about taxing these wealthy hedge fund, man hedge fund managers? This has been an issue uh, for more than a decade that there have been major efforts to change these taxes so that these uh, managers pay ordinary income rates, the normal rates that you and I pay on our salaries. The Private equity groups in particular, but the hedge fund managers as well, have been very effective in blocking those changes. As I say, now going back over a decade, uh, it turns out that, that Kristen Sinema is taking the heat for this because she was the only Democrat in the Senate that was prepared to say, let's not do this. Uh, but they've been very effective. They spent millions of dollars in lobbying. They spent tens of millions, if not more, in uh, campaign contributions. And every time this comes up, they seem to win. I want to ask you about the stock buybacks. That's a new 1% tax on that, the idea that um, companies buy back their stocks to increase the value for them and for their shareholders. Tuesday, Judy Woodruff asked Majority Leader Chuck Schumer about this idea that the bill uh, does help some of the wealthy. And here was his response. 
we're putting a 1% tax on stock buybacks. These stock buybacks also help the corporate billionaires and the big, big hedge fund holders and things like that because, and they do no benefit for people. They just make the stock price go up by having fewer shares. So that brought in $70 billion against the very wealthy. Stock buybacks, of course, companies use those to increase their value for them and their shareholders. Is what uh, Leader Schumer said accurate? Well, he's right that they use stock buybacks, which have some tax advantage over paying dividends, and that the stock buybacks do tend to raise the prices of their shares. The real question here is whether this 1% tax on stock buybacks is going to change any behavior of corporate managers at all. I would predict not. Uh, if you look at the revenue that the Joint Committee on Taxation believes this provision will bring in, I think they believe not. They're basically assuming stock buybacks will continue at a high rate. That's how you get the money from this provision. So I don't think it's going to change corporate behavior. And I don't, certainly don't think it's going to affect the millionaires and billionaires uh, that uh, Senator Schumer was referring to. Over all of this, of course, is growing disparity in this country. And I just want to ask a big picture question. Do you think these tax changes will have any effect on that rich and poor gap that has been growing in this country? Um, I think not, I'm sorry to say. Um, there are no taxes on wealthy individuals. Uh, Joe Biden, uh, as president, proposed $365 billion of increased taxes on the wealthy in his budget proposals this year. And uh, in this bill, there are zero of those. Uh, so there are many loopholes that remain, uh, but this bill has basically decided that the only taxes that will be raised here mainly are large, large corporations. And uh, those taxes are, are small enough that I, I don't think it's going to have any effect, any noticeable effect on the distribution of wealth or income in this country. The division between the rich and everybody else is going to continue, I'm afraid. Michael Gratz of Columbia University, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you, Lisa.